is Anjali and in this video I am going to explain you how to use string functions in C++. To use string functions we have a header file named string.h so you need to include that header file over here with the other header files you need in your program and we can use the functions defined in the header file in the program below. Now what I am going to do in this code is I am just going to show you that how we process strings. So if I have a string, let's say str50, that means I can have maximum of 50 characters in this. And I want to input the value from the user. So I can like enter a string. But now if you input the string with the help of cn, you will not be able to read spaces. So if you want to read spaces, there are two options. You can use get function or you can use cn.getLine. For both of them, you need to include some extra header file. Like if I'm going to use get s, I have to use stdio. And for using get line, you have to use iomanip.h. So when we write get, we just write like this. Okay. Now I want to find the length of this. That means how many characters are there in the string. So you don't have to use a loop as we used to do earlier. You just need to call the function like this, strlen, and in bracket, pass name of the string. So it will count the length of its own, that is the number of characters in the string, and store it in the variable L. Now I want to print like entered string L, and I print the string. Then I want to print the number of characters in the string. The number of characters are L. So we print L here. And let's execute this much of code first. So when I execute this, and I enter, say, hello, world. So it gives you 11. That's five letters in hello, five in world, and one is the space. So spaces are also counted as characters. So that would be the length of the string. So this is how we find the length. Then we have a function called strrev. This is used to find reverse of the string. And the reverse is stored within the string itself. So we can't write like uh, b is equal to string reverse str. That will give you an error. It will reverse the string and will store the reverse in str itself. So reverse of string is, if I want to print here, I write str. And that's it. Let's see. I enter here computer. So number of characters are 16 and you can see the reverse. It starts from E C N E I C S that is science in reverse and then computer in reverse. That's how you can get reverse of a string. Now comes if I need to swap two strings. If I need to swap two strings, that means I need to copy one string into another string. So if I have a string A and another string B and I want to interchange them. I want to interchange them. I want whatever is there in A should get into B and whatever is there in B should get into A. So let's say we do it over here. So I ask the user enter two strings and we get the values in A and in B. Now to swap what procedure we have. We have this procedure that we should have a temporary string. Let's say str is a temporary string. I put a in str, b in a, and str back in b. This is the basic logic of swapping with the help of third variable. So that is what I have done over here. I have just swapped the strings with the help of a third string variable. What do you think? It should work. The logic is fine, so we think it should work, but it won't. When you compile this code, you get three errors over here, and those errors are L value required. Because a string is an array, and one array cannot be assigned to another array with the help of equal to sign. We can't do this. To do this, we have a special function called strcpy, that is string copy. strcpy is used to copy one string into another, same as the assignment thing. But since assignment operator can't be used with that, we have this function. So it also assigns the right-hand string 
into the left side string. So first line will copy the value of A into STR, then it will copy B into A and then STR into B. So if I run this code, there is no error now. There is no error. You enter a string like this is for the STR thing. This is not the swap thing. Okay, this is done. Now I have to enter two strings. So I enter Anjali and then I enter file. So it has swapped. Now A is Anjali and B is, oh sorry, A is file and B is Anjali after swapping. So this is how we can use STR CPY. Similar to STR CPY, there is a function named STR CAT. Now STR CAT stands for concatenation. Here it doesn't override the value. Rather, it attaches the value at the end. So here, the source string will be attached with the destination string. So now the destination string will be having a combination of both rather than overwriting it. So that is STRCAT. That's for string concatenation. So that's string concatenation, joining two strings together. And the last function you can use over here from string.edge is string compare. STR CMP. Like I have entered these two strings, okay, I have swapped them, but I need to check whether they are same or not. So to check that, we have a function called STR CMP. And the string compare function gives us zero positive value or negative value. If it gives zero, that means the strings are equal. There is no difference in the two strings. They are exactly same. The number of characters, the exact characters, everything is same. So it will return zero. But if it returns a non-zero value, that could be positive or negative. So if it is positive, how would it be positive? For example, I have Anjali and I have uh, Anu. So if I have this, if two strings are compared and it is asked which is greater, how do we find that out? We compare them alphabetically. A is compared with A. N is compared with N, J is compared with U. So it returns the difference of the first mismatch. So it is going to return the difference of SCI values of J and U, which is going to be a negative value. So we say that the first string is less than the second string. So if we get a negative value, that means the first string is small. If you get a positive value, that means the first string is greater. And if you get zero, that means both strings are same. So when string comparison is performed, characters are compared one by one. And as soon as there is a mismatch, it returns the difference of the SKI value. So that's how string compare works. So now the two strings I enter are here and this. So after swapping, it is swapped, but the values are not equal. And if I enter the equal values, say I enter hello, and the second string also hello. So after swap, it's the same, and the strings are equal. So these five functions, that is string length, string copy, string concatenate, string compare, and string reverse, are there in string.h. So whenever you need to use any of these functions, you need to include string.h for that and you can use it here. And in case you want that the capital and small letters should not be differentiated, when you compare the two strings, just put an i over here. So that will be str cmp i, which will ignore the case. It will just compare the characters. So that's how functions in string.h can be used. I hope you understood what is the use of functions in string.h. If yes, then do try making a program that is to input a string and check if it is a palindrome or not. So a palindrome string is when the string and its reverse are same. So check if a string is a palindrome or not and print the result accordingly. Hope the video was useful to you. If yes, do like it. Thank you.